after you get a bit of a handle on what electric fields are, invariably your course, your study of electric fields, are going to involve the idea of superposition. And superposition means what happens when electric fields add together. That's what superposition stands for. And even the most simple case I can think of is one of two charges like this. Consider what happens in the space here. As we discussed in a previous video, when you have two charges like this, all of space around the charge is filled with the electric field from that charge. So, for instance, from this positive charge here, there's electric fields that lines that go in all directions and cover the whole universe with electric field lines because of this one charge right here. And they're all going to point away from the charge like this. Through the negative one like that. Let's label a few more arrows on it. They're all going to point away like that. There's the electric field lines due to that positive charge which I have there. But the negative charge is there too. And just like the positive charge has its field lines, and so will the negative charge filling all the space around it like this. All the space around this negative charge is filled with these electric field lines. So here we go. And they're going to point inwards like this. Inwards, inwards like that. So the issue of superposition, see, even comes up in this simple case here. Inwards, inwards. All these electric field lines point inwards. Even in this simple case here, superposition arises because we'll ask the question, okay, fine. You have a positive charge here with, it, with its electric field lines filling space. And this negative charge here, with its electric field lines filling all the space, the question might be very simply, what is the electric field right here at this point? Or what is the electric field at this point? Or what is the electric field at that point? Or what is the electric field at that point over there? So what you have to be prepared to do is the electric field at this point, there certainly is a field there. Like, for instance, how do I know that? Because if I came in with a test charge, if I put a big positive charge right here, that has nothing to do with these two, but just another test charge right here. I might be curious about how will this charge move. Will it get pushed or pulled? If so, in what direction? In order to do that, I have to know what the electric field is, the net electric field there. I'll just sort of label it E sub net. And why would I need to know the net electric field? Because the net force on one of those charges would be its charge, the test charge, times the net electric field. So I need to know what that net electric field would be. And that's what superposition is all about. It's the ability of understanding there can be more than one charge filling space around it with its electric field, and you'd like to know what is the electric field contribution due to all of those charges at a particular point. And I believe there's probably an entire chapter of your textbook dedicated to just this issue, and indeed that is the next most complicated thing, is what happens when these E fields superimpose. So what we'll do then is just look at a couple of simple cases here to allow you to get a grip on actually what happens here. So what we'll do is we'll just take that positive charge, we'll go ahead and put it here, we'll be nice and neat about it. We'll put a negative charge right here, and we'll keep it nice and neat and we'll draw a nice coordinate system around like that, something like this and like this. So we've taken a positive and negative charge and we've oriented them in a nice symmetric way around a convenient coordinate system that we can use to do our sort of bookkeeping here. What we'll do also is we'll say that this distance right here is going to be the distance S over 2 and this distance right here will be S over 2. And what it is here is just two charges that are separated by a total distance S. Okay? Uh, if you want to look up something in your book, this configuration here is commonly called the dipole. And it's about the simplest electric field superposition case there is. It's two point charges. There could be a positive and negative is here, a negative and negative, or two positive. It doesn't matter. You should be able to handle it. Okay? So what we'll do then is we'll look at two superposition cases here and see if we can sort of work out what happens. So the first question we'll ask is, what is the electric field right here? That's the first question we'll ask. Uh, and we'll sort of place this point here to be a distance y above the axis. That's my arbitrary choice. Y can be very far or very near. And again, the idea is that I could place a test charge here. I could put a positive or negative charge here, let go of it, and watch how it moves. It might move up or down or something like that, but the electric field that it feels at this point is a superposition of that produced by the positive and the negative charges. Let's see if we can figure out what it is. See what that electric field is at that red point. Electric field superposition. Okay. So what we do is we treat each charge independently, just like the other one doesn't exist, and say, what electric field does this positive charge produce through this point? And if I was going to draw that in there, well, I know electric field lines sort of go, you know, in all directions, but I'm interested in the one through this point. So I'll draw a nice big green arrow going through the point, and I'll call that E positive. That's the electric field contribution due to the positive charge through that point. What does the negative charge contribute? Well, I'll sort of move to a different color here in blue and say, well, we know electric field lines go towards negative charges. This is going to be a big arrow sort of going this way, through that charge, and we can call that E negative. And all told, this is the big electric field line that is sunk into that electric field going that way. But one of the electric field lines does go through this red point up here. So I hope you see the issue of superposition, because if I look at this red point, I have two electric fields going through it. One do the positive charge, one do the negative charge. So what I'll do here is I'll say my total electric field, say E total, is that 
the positive electric field, plus the electric field do the positive charge, plus the electric field do the negative charge. That's sort of the way I'll set up. So now all we have to do is figure out what E plus and E minus are, add them together, and we'll sort of have a result. So let's see here. So the total electric field then, E positive, let's see, what is it going to be? Well, I know the electric field due to a point charge is KQ over R squared. I have my constant K, I multiply by the amount of charge that's producing the field, and divide it by the distance I am from it squared. So over here, it'll sort of be K, and I don't know how much positive charge there was, but I'll call it Q positive. It could be 10 nanocoulombs or 1.6 on 10 to the minus 19, anything like that. Now the tricky part maybe then is what is the distance here between this red point and the charge. And if you look at it carefully, it looks like the total distance is y and the distance from the axis s over 2 from the charge, it looks like that distance, this little distance in here, is going to be y minus s over 2. And so that's my distance right there, y minus s over 2. Of course, don't forget to square. So what I have here is the electric field contribution at that red point because of the positive charge. And it is a positive number right here. I'll sort of denote positive because it is pointing up. And up is normally what we, we consider the positive direction. Now for the negative charge, let's see what I get there. I'll get a K once again and also Q negative, whatever how much charge is negative there. That's what we'll call Q negative. It could be, again, negative 1.6 and 10 to the minus 19 if it's an electron or whatever the case may be. But I need this distance now. I need the distance the negative charge is from the, the red point. That would be this long distance right here. So let's see. This distance is y. This is another s over 2 here. So it looks like my distance then is going to be y plus s over 2. That's how far the negative charge is from that red dot. So I can divide that by y plus s over 2 quantity squared. So now the issue is do I add or subtract that? Well, the electric field due to the positive charge is up, but the electric field due to the negative charge is down. So in general, superposition does call for a pot and addition. You just add things together. So I'll add an addition, a plus sign in there. However, I know just from common sense that this blue electric field, because of the negative charge, does point down. So there needs to be some cancellation in there. So this is going to be a negative in there. So yes, all told, the total electric field at that point will be KQ plus over Y minus S over 2 squared minus KQ minus over Y plus S over 2 that quantity squared. These are all Y's in here. So I'm going to stop here and just say your book or your instructor or whatever your goals are might be different from what I'm doing here. There's ways of simplifying this, using the binomial approximation, that sort of thing. But I'll just leave it here and say here's your first electric field, electric field superposition problem. This quantity here is the total electric field at this red point here because of these two points here oriented in this dipole orientation like that. So there's your first electric field superposition problem.